Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another Starry Story Time. I'm Tiffany Woolbrick with the Word Teacher Planetarium, and today we're here to talk about pictures that you can make out of the stars in the nighttime sky. We're going to do that with this book called Zoo in the Sky by Jacqueline Mitten. And have you ever seen pictures or made pictures? Uh, I guess we do it oftentimes during the day with clouds. Sometimes you can even, if you have a good imagination, you can even see animals up in the sky. Well, during the day you might do this with clouds, but at nighttime you can make pictures with the stars by connecting them, making playing dot to dot with the stars to make pictures. There's all kinds of shapes and uh, up in the sky. Uh, right now it's summertime and one of the easiest uh, shapes to spot is a really big bright triangle high overhead called the summer triangle. So, uh, but if you have a really good imagination, and I'm sure if you love to read, you definitely have a good imagination, um, you can see more complicated star patterns and some of them make animals. So we're going to learn about some of those uh, animal patterns in the sky. Now, oftentimes we refer to patterns of stars that make shapes as constellations. So you'll hear that word constellations in this book today. I love the artwork in here. Isn't this beautiful? When the sun sets, darkness falls. The stars appear one by one. Then the sky turns into a picture puzzle. What is hiding in the patterns of stars? Some people say they only see squares and squiggles, lines and loops. But imagine hard, and the sky comes to life. The star patterns make a wing there, a tail here, a twinkling eye, even a scorpion stinger. Sky watchers long, long ago imagined a whole zoo of animals. They shine there still when you are under the magic spell of the nighttime sky. Here's one. You see our bears? The great bear quietly pads her way around the north pole of the sky. Every day she makes the trip. Two bright stars across her back point straight to Polaris, by, which is called the North Star. Hanging off Polaris by his tail is the little bear. He swings around behind her. You won't see bears quite the same anywhere else. Real life bears don't have long tails. Our bears in the nighttime sky are special because they have these really long tails. Countless stars light the Milky Way. This milky band of light, if you have really dark skies, you can sometimes see that. Along the silvery path, the wings outstretched, flies the swan. On July and August nights, he soars from east to west across the sky. It takes him from dusk until dawn. His eye gleams with a twin star, yellow and blue, called Alberio. He needs a good eye to keep a sharp lookout. The cunning fox runs behind him, looking for his dinner. So this is the constellation Cygnus the Swan, which can be found inside the Summer Triangle, the, the shape that I mentioned that's really easy to see in the summertime. And Cygnus sort of glides along this milky band of light, which is the light from our galaxy. So all of these stars here, this is the, the plane of our galaxy, or I kind of think, it, think of it like the middle of our galaxy, like the core of it, where it's um, where there's more stars in our sky than in other places. Uh, and it's sort of a flat round disk like a pancake, so it kind of makes this arc in our sky because we're inside it looking up. Um, another interesting point is uh, Cygnus's eye here. 
Alberio. Uh, it looks beautiful in a telescope if you have a telescope or maybe someone in your family does and they can show it to you. Uh, for a very, very long time, we thought these were twin stars that orbited each other, that they were actually close together in space. Uh, but we just realized recently that they aren't. They just look really close in our sky. They look really close together in our sky, but they're not near each other in space. Interesting. We're always learning new things about the sky. The scorpion. Ooh. The scorpion has a nasty sting on his tail as he, beware as he scuttles across the Milky Way. His tail is curved around and he is waving his fearsome claws. Antares, the blood red star glows bright at his heart, but the wolf nearby is not afraid. After all, he is not such a friendly creature himself. So these are all constellations that you can find in your backyard in the summertime. Uh, the, big the big and little bears that we talked about can be found in the north. Cygnus in the summer triangle high in the sky. And uh, Scorpius is found in the south. Uh, so you have to, usually you have to wait till you're really into summertime. So like late July, August is a good time to see uh, Scorpius in the south. Ooh, what animal is that? This is one of my favorites. Leo the lion is the king of the beasts and lord of the sky. In February and March, he looks down from a throne high up in the heavens. Stars in his mane shine like jewels in a crown. His brightest star lies close to his heart. That star's name is Regulus, which means the little king. We can maybe see Leo briefly uh, in the early summertime, but it's a, he's best seen during the springtime. He has this sort of curved shape here. It looks like a backwards question mark to me. That's how I find signet or how I find Leo. It's a very unique shape. Charging through the zodiac. Here comes the bull. Head down, horns thrust forward, Taurus is ready to toss the twins. But they are safe, always, on the other side of the Milky Way. The bull gl glowers with a brilliant red eye. The star Aldebaran. A whole cluster of stars is scattered around his nose. The Pleiades huddles around his shoulder. There's the Pleiades, this is a group of stars. They actually live close together in space. And this is the Hyades or the Hyades, which makes up the face of Taurus. And those are also stars that live close together in space. And you can, when you look up at them in the nighttime sky, you can actually see many stars close, clustered very closely together. So the Pleiades is huddled behind his shoulder. These sisters are not afraid. They know he never looks back. <laughs> and so many people told stories about constellations in the nighttime sky, oftentimes to help us mark the seasons, but also to help us remember where things are. So as an example, this story was saying that Taurus looks like he's charging towards the Gemini twins, but, uh, but the Milky Way always protects them. So that helps you remember that if you find Taurus on one side, Gemini would be on the other side of the Milky Way. It's easy to remember. The great dog. The great dog is chasing the hare, but he never knows, but he knows he can never catch it. This dog is a splendid star studded creature. His brightest star, Sirius, outshines all others in the nighttime sky. That's right, this star Sirius is the brightest star in the whole sky. Sirius means scorching one. A good name for a white hot star, but spot it low in the sky and Sirius flashes all the colors of the rainbow like a diamond glinting in the sunlight. This one is tough to see in the summertime. It's uh, the, the great dog, this is also called Canis Major. 
is living near the sun right now in the summertime. So when the sun's up during the day, we can't see the stars, but they're still up there. We just can't see them. So we have to wait for Earth to go around the sun a little bit more until winter time. And during winter time, the sun will be in our summertime, next to our summertime stars, so we won't be able to see them. But we can see new constellations we call the winter constellations. Canis Major, the big dog, or the great dog, is one of our wintertime constellations. And he is very easy to spot in the south-ish sky, south area part of the sky, because that star is just so bright. It's brighter than anything around it. It's brighter than any star in the sky during the nighttime, of course. Deep in the southern sky. Wow, these are part stars that we cannot see in the northern hemisphere. You have to travel below the equator. You have to go really far south on planet Earth to see these stars. Deep in the southern sky, the glittering goldfish swim alongside where the good ship Argo sails an ocean of stars. The flying fish gives chase and fun, soaring out of the waves. Now take care, he warns. We must not get caught. But the fish are safe in their starry sea. They will never be anyone's dinner. Goldfish in the sky. <laughs> this is a big whale. Wow, all kinds of animals in the sky. We can kind of see this one uh, from where we live, but it's a little difficult. We can't see all of it. The whale is the greatest of all living creatures. He is one of the largest in the sky, too. A monstrous size, he is sometimes called the sea monster. On the whale's back, you will find Nera, a marvelous star. Sorry, right there. See how red it glows by his fin? Nera keeps dimming until it disappears. Then little by little, it brightens once more. About a year later, it's back, bright as ever, only to fade all over again. That's an interesting thing of, about stars that, so there's a couple things that we don't think about a lot with stars. And one of them we've mentioned are colors. So Mira has this reddish color. We learned about Antares in Scorpius, uh, the Scorpion, and uh, Aldebaran in Taurus the Bull. Those are red stars. Yes, absolutely, you can see color in stars if you look really close and you have good dark skies. Uh, and that's, that's one of the things that makes stars so beautiful. Yes, they're diff they look like uh, different brightnesses and different colors in our sky. But also, they can change brightness. This doesn't happen too, too often or, well, it actually happens quite often, but not so noticeably that we can see it with our eyes. That is pretty rare in a star. We call them variable stars, and that just means that their brightness varies. Usually this is because something is passing in front of it. So if another less bright star is, pa is orbiting that star, then when that little, the little star goes in front of the bigger, brighter star, it'll cover up part of it and we won't be able to see it as brightly. That's one example of a variable star. So it, it just happens, um, based on how we're looking at the star. It's not really the star itself is dimming and getting brighter. It's something that, and that's going in front of it and covering it up from our view. It's really cool uh, and kind of rare, to, like I said, to notice it with your eyes. A zoo without birds would never do. In the sky, there's a whole flock parading about, about the South Pole. So again, these are birds we, we cannot see from the Northern Hemisphere. But if you travel south, you'll have a whole new sky to look at. Tails on display, the proud peacock and the bird of paradise show off to anyone who watches. The toucan's glory is on his beak, studded with an orange star. The crane peers at them all, stretching his long neck. Red and blue stars shine on his back. Wow, that sounds like a beautiful constellation. Okay. 
the long scaly body of the crimson-eyed dragon coil around the north pole of the heavens. Take care, he might breathe fire. You won't find a dragon like him in an ordinary zoo, but the starry sky is magic and one fine sparkly night, who knows, you might just fall under its spell. This is Draco the dragon, which we can see any time of year where we live uh, in Ohio or anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere. Um, and I like to think of Draco, some people call him Draco the dragon and some cultures think of it as a snake. And in either case, this dragon or this snake sort of slithers or snakes between our two bears, our big bear and our little bear in the sky. So that's how I always find it. It's a really beautiful constellation, but it's not very bright. So you have to have dark skies and with no clouds in the way to see it. Oh, that was our last one. So this is just a little description of what stars are and what constellations are, which we've already gone over. But wow, we learned about so many animals that we can see in our sky. Did you have fun today? I sure did. Well, I hope to see you back again soon with another Starry Storytime. In the meantime, keep looking up.